answered the liberal and kind offer of the king. For best he did. Then are we all undone? It is not possible. It cannot be the king should keep his word in loving us. He shall suspect us still and find a time to punish this offense in other faults. Suspicion all our lives shall be stuck full of eyes. For treason is but trusted like the fox, whom ne'er so tame, so cherished and locked up, will have a wild trick of his ancestors. Look how we can, or sad or merrily, interpretation shall misquote our looks. We shall feed like oxen at the stall, the better cherished, still the nearer death. My nephew's trespass may be well forgot. It hath the excuse of youth and heat of blood and an adopted name of privilege. A hair-brained hotspur governed by a spleen. All his offenses live on my head and on his father's. We did train him on. And his corruption being tamed from us, we, as the spring of all, shall pay for all. Therefore, good cousin, let not Harry know by any means the offer of the king. Well, deliver what you will. I'll say tis so. Look, here comes your cousin. Uncle is returned. Deliver up my lord Westmoreland. Uncle, what news? The king will bid you battle presently. Ah, go you. Find him by the lord of Westmoreland. Go you, Lord Douglas, and tell him so. Marion shall very willingly. There is no seeming mercy in the king. Did you beg any? God forbid. I told him gently of our grievances and of his oath-breaking, which he mendeth thus, by now forswearing that he is forsworn. He calls us rebels, traitors, and will scourge with haughty arms this hateful name in us. Arms, gentlemen, to arms. But I have thrown a brave defiance in King Henry's cheek, and Westmoreland that was engaged did bear it, which cannot but bring him quickly on. The Prince of Wales stepped forth before the king, and nephew challenged you to single fight. Oh, that the quarrel lay on our heads, and none might draw short breath today but I and Harry Monmouth. Tell me, tell me, how showed his tasking? Seemed it in contempt? No, by my faith. I never in my life did hear a challenge urged more modestly, unless a brother should a brother dare to gentle exercise and proof of arms. He gave you all the duties of a man, trimmed up your praises with a princely tongue, spoke your deservings like a chronicle, making you ever better than you are by still dispraising praise value with you. And, which became him like a prince indeed, he made a blushing cycle of himself and chid his truant youth with such a grace as if he mastered their double spirit of teaching and of learning instantly. There he paused. But let me tell the world, if he outlived the envy of this day, England never did owe so sweet a hope so much misconstrued in his wantonness. Cousin, I think thou art enamored upon his follies. Never did I hear of any prince so wild a libertine. But be he as he will, yet once, ere night, I shall embrace him with a soldier's arm, and he shall shrink under my courtesy. Arm, arm with speed, and fellows, soldiers, friends, better consider what you have to do than I, that have not well the gift of tongue, can lift your blood up with persuasion. My lord, here are letters for you. I cannot read them now. Oh, gentlemen, the time of life is short. To spend such shortness basely were too long, if life to write upon a dial's point, still ending at the arrival of an hour. If we live, we live to tread on kings, if die brave death, when princes die with us. Now, for our consciences, that arms are fair, when the intent of bearing them is just. My lord, prepare! The king comes on apace. I thank him that he cuts me from my tail. For I profess, not talking only this, let each man do his best. And here draw I a sword, whose temper I intend to stain with the best blood that I can meet with all in the adventure of this perilous day. Now, as for arms, Percy and set on. Sound all the lofty instruments of war, and by their music let us all embrace. For heaven to earth, some of us never shall a second time do such a courtesy. Mm -hmm. 